Octoprint is without a doubt one of my favorite upgrades that can be done to just about any 3D printer. Back when I was running my small print farm, the ability to control all of my 3D printers wirelessly saved me a ton of time, and also the ability to manage all of the G-code from just my computer versus having to go and constantly plug and unplug different memory cards was amazing. And Although there are some alternatives for the firmware like Clipper, such as Fluid or Mainsail, Octoprint has some serious advantages, like a very powerful library of plugins, a much easier configuration, and of course, its ability to be used with a much broader range of 3D printers, not just ones running the Clipper firmware. Five years ago, we covered how to install it on the Pi 3, and three years ago, although never fully supported by Octoprint, I did make a video showing you how to install it on the original Raspberry Pi Zero W, and that's what I used for a lot of my printers just because of its low cost. However, it was a bit slower, a bit clunkier, and it also didn't allow you to use things like webcams if you wanted to. Recently, the Pi 2 0W was announced and released, and with that came a pretty serious performance boost, one of them being that they are using the same CPU on that that was used on the Raspberry Pi 3, which is much better than the one on the original Pi Zero, although it is a bit underclocked. It was officially announced by Octoprint to be compatible and they said that they can actually put their seal of approval as recommending it. So this Pi will allow you to have a much snappier user experience and even use webcams if that's something you want to do. After needing Octoprint for a project I was recently working on, I discovered that the install process has changed a little bit since my previous videos and it's actually much easier than ever before to get this up and running. So in today's video, we are going to be covering how to install the latest version of Octoprint or OctoPi on the Pi 20W, which is again, Again, a amazing $15 board. If you do have a Pi 3 or 3B or 4, the install for this is going to be nearly identical with the main difference being you won't need any of the little adapters for the Pi Zero. So with all that being said and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Huge thank you to MicroSwiss for sponsoring today's video. MicroSwiss manufactures hot ends, extruders, and nozzles for over 30 different 3D printer models and is constantly expanding. I've been running their upgrades on a wide range of Creality printers for over a year now, and I've printed everything from standard PLA to carbon fiber nylon with them. I love that they're a US-based company and that all their products are machined in-house. This helps them to maintain the extremely high level of quality that their customers have grown to expect. Another huge perk is that their upgrades are made for specific machines, making them drop-in replacements in most instances. This helps to expedite the upgrade process and allows you to get up and running again very quickly. Links will be in the description to find out more about the various upgrades they offer or to pick up your own. Starting off, of course, you'll need your Raspberry Pi. We're using the Zero 2, but a 3B, 3B Plus, or 4B will work fine. You'll need a micro SD card. A 4 gigs is the minimum requirement. I'd say anything over 8 gigs is probably overkill for how small the G-code files are. You'll need a quality power supply. This initial one was an old phone charger and it actually underpowered the Pi. And the reason for that is that the Zero 2 takes up to three watts while the original only took 1.7 watts. So it does need a bit of a beefier power supply. I ended up using my little hub that I have that can take up to four USB cables and I used a USB to micro USB. And the cool thing about that is you can power up to four of the Pi Zeros off of just one hub. And lastly, you'll need an OTG cable. This just goes from micro USB USB that'll plug into the Pi Zero to a full-size USB 2.0 that we can then plug our USB cable from that into our 3D printer. Once you've got all that, you are ready to go ahead and install Octoprint. Thanks to Raspberry Pi Imager, the install has never been easier. So I'll link you guys in the description to this, but you'll need to download and install this. They have it for Mac, Windows, and Linux, so you are covered. Once you go ahead and get it installed and you open it up, the interface is incredibly simple. We'll start off by choosing the OS and clicking on Other Specific Purpose OS. Underneath that, you will find Octopi, and selecting that will pull up the latest stable version, which we will then go ahead and select as well. Once selected, hit Control, Shift, and X on your keyboard. That will bring up an options menu for the install. You'll need to enable SSH, so that way if you ever need to connect remotely to your Pi to do any admin stuff, you can go ahead and do that. And just select a password, of course, that you're going to remember. We're also going to configure the Wi-Fi. The Pi Zero 2 only is compatible with 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, so make sure if you have a different network name for your 5 gigahertz that you name it accordingly. And lastly, you'll need to select your Wi-Fi country. I'm in the US, so I will 
will go ahead and choose that. Once you've got that filled out, go ahead and click save. Insert your micro SD card into your computer and click on the choose storage option. I've got two here. The 7.7 gigs is the micro SD card and then the thousand gigs is going to be my uh, secondary storage drive. It's going to ask you to make sure that you want to write it because it is going to completely format the memory uh, of whatever it is. So make sure that you've selected the correct device. Once you've done that, it will begin writing. This process on my end took somewhere like 10 to 15 minutes. It will go ahead and write and then it will verify. And if everything goes correctly, you will see this pop up saying that it has been written and you can now eject the SD card. If for some reason you forgot to enter your Wi-Fi in the previous step, you can go under the micro SD card once you've flashed it and open up the Octopi WPA supplicant file. You'll want to use either VS Code or Notepad++ to make sure that none of the formatting is screwed up and you'll need to go down to your network type. The most common is the WPA or WPA2 secured and to enable that you'll just go ahead and remove the four pound signs before network SSID, PSK, and that final curly uh, curly bracket and then enter in your Wi-Fi network name in the parentheses for SSID as well as the network's password in uh, the pass key parentheses. A final step will be to make sure you have the correct country selected. I went ahead and um, deactivated Great Britain by adding a pound sign. That's the default and uncommented US because that is where I'm at and go ahead and save the file and you are good to go on the network stuff. Once ejected, insert the micro SD card into your Pi and go ahead and plug in the power cable. The first boot up will take a little bit longer. In my experience, it's usually five-ish to maybe 10 minutes. And the way I usually know is that the little status LED will be blinking as it's doing things. And then when it's actually completed, it will be just solid. And then we'll need to figure out what IP address has been assigned to Octopi. The easiest way I found is to log into your router. In my instance with Cox, the network is incredibly easy to just log in as my username, go to the devices, I see Octopi, and by selecting that, I will have the IP address listed right there. Your version might be a little bit different, but the key is, again, logging into your network will show you what is on your network, and you can grab that IP address. Once you've got your Octopi IP address, enter that into your browser. That will pull up the first setup wizard. And at this point, I mean, you're pretty much ready to rock and roll. I will go ahead and run you through this just so that way you kind of see what I choose. But it's going to ask if you have a previous install backup you'd like to restore this from. I do not, so I will skip that. You will need to generate a username and password so that way um, you do have to be logged in to be able to control your printers, which I think is a good safety feature to have. Next, you will need to decide whether you want the Octopi print instance to do a connectivity check periodically. I decided to enable that. And then there is the anonymous usage tracking. I also decided in my case to enable that. It's totally up to you. There is a list of blacklisted plugins and I did check the list. It is a quite short list. And if you look at all of the things that those plugins can do, which is basically make your UI completely non-functional. I I, did, I went ahead and enabled the blacklist. If any plugin has been blacklisted, I think there's a good reason for it. And uh, again, for user experience and safety, I did go ahead and do that. This part is going to be completely up to you. I am going to be using this with the Ender 3 for this install. So I just named the printer test printer. The model for the printer is the Ender 3. And I went ahead and populated all of the fields with the appropriate settings for that printer. Yours will definitely vary depending on what printer it is is that you are going to be using this with. And that is the final step. There is some safety warnings. And also if you do want to support Octoprint because it is developed by one person full time and it is open source and free, um, you know, definitely something to consider. Now that the Pi and Octoprint is installed, we will go ahead and plug this into our printer. I always recommend to turn the printer on first before connecting the Pi. I've seen the printers do some really weird things when you power the boards with the Pi. Um, so yeah, turn the printer on, plug it in. Then you can go ahead and connect to your printer. I recommend refreshing Octoprint so that way the printer will show up on the serial port. And then the baud rate, usually it's going to be 115200 or 250000 In my instance, it is 115200 And as you can see, it says that it is operational. At this point, all that's left is to do some printing. So I sliced up a simple calibration cube, uploaded it to Octoprint just to show you guys that it is indeed working and everything is set up. And congratulations, you've got a printer that is now wireless with a ton of awesome additional features that are ready to be explored. 
I have been doing a bit more 3D modeling lately, primarily using Shaper 3D on my iPad, and I created a little Pi case that I am pretty proud of. The main thing is, is that it doesn't require any hardware. The Pi Zero or Pi Two Zero just snaps onto the standoffs I created, and then there is a lid that snaps in place. There is two optional holes on the bottom in case you do want to mount it to any 3D printer that uses like 2040 aluminum extrusions, but I will place links down below to that. As well as if you want to run a webcam, um, you will need a special adapter that basically will allow you to plug that USB webcam into the Pi Zero. There's quite a few low cost options I found on Amazon and I will place links to some of the ones that I felt were the best value. And lastly, if this is your first time installing the uh, Raspberry Pi and you are, or Octoprint on your Raspberry Pi and you're interested in seeing some plugins, I did make a video that probably needs an update, but it has some of my favorite plugins for Octoprint, which I will also link down below. And it's at least going to be a great starting point to explore the world of plugins that are existing for this install. During the time of making this video, I was so happy with my Pi 2 Zeros that I actually was able to locate two more that I ordered online. So I do plan on installing Octo Clipper on one, which is kind of a hybrid of being able to use Octoprint with the Clipper firmware. If there is interest in picking up where this video ends to kind of install that portion of it, let me know in the comments down below and that's something that I will definitely consider doing. And of course, if you have any questions at all or something in this video is unclear, please let me know in the comments down below and I will do my absolute best to answer your questions. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I will place links down below in the description over to our Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you, allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.